This is an ASA Abloy CLIQ cylinder click. CLIQ, I don't know what that stands for, but we call it click. This is a European oval format. They're available in uh, Kia Knob, Mortise, everything else from ASA Abloy. You can see we got six pins on the top, drill protection. But from ASA Abloy, they also make clicks in uh, in abloy and in multi-lock and also in medical so we're going to take a look at this how do we know that this is a click cylinder well let's uh, take a shot here well I'm attempting to show that there's a there's no finger pins as in a conventional uh, high security cylinder but I, I don't know if you can see this little silver bar down inside there. We'll get more into that later, but you sort of get the idea. No finger pins, or side pins, excuse me. And, uh, we have this nothing on the left, we got this other thing on the right. Okay, what we're looking at is this little thing right here. Here's another shot of it. This is the key way you can see the pins. So that's what I wanted to point out. This this little arm right here. If you look in the keyway, that's what you see. So we're going to dissect this. These are Torx screws, but I have this little uh, little driver here that will fit. Anyway, I'm going to take that off. I need to show you all this. Uh... So we got that driver off. Now you notice there's a little... We can take this bar out. What does this do? This actually is what holds the springs in. See, so we can see a spring down in there as we slide this out. So we're going to take all these pins out. Let's check it out. Let's see what do we got going here. And pin cylinder one. Okay, we got some pins. So as you can see, we got some barrel spools and. Uh, Standard pinning for ASA. This is the retaining uh, holds the springs and stuff in. Here's the uh, the plug. Uh, notice that uh, we still cannot turn the plug. Well, let's. Here's one most interesting part. Let's take the plug out. Oh my goodness! All right. This is quite interesting. Here's this is a sidebar mechanism. It will not depress. Here we got some kind of weird thing and some wires going on. Here's the pin chambers. And we can see we have some drill protection. We got these wires going over here. <laughs> Something going on there. Oh, this is very important. Notice this this pin here right in the keyway. It's spring loaded. Um, yeah, so you can depress it and it will rock back. Yeah, I do not have a very good tool here. Let's try this one. Yeah. Uh, boy. So, there we go. So it's spring-loaded, so it goes in this position. So what that actually does is it it returns this sidebar and if it's in this position, this sidebar will never go in. So if you're going to actually manipulate this lock, you've got to make sure that this is a reset. So let's get into it in some more detail. So before we move on, I wanted to... Uh, this is a standard uh, Bible or, or housing. You know, the... Uh, that's just the 600 twin. All the twins would fit right in here with... The, side pins and we have the groove there for the sidebar so this is a standard thing there's nothing special about this except of course it's an oval format but you can see the sidebar groove so this is common to all of them it's just a unique plug and the plug you know here's the sidebar so what is a click well, maybe we should define that c-l-i-q click it, it means that we need both the key, you know, that matches all the, the correct key biddings to unlock the, 
the main shear line and then we need to have the sidebar be able to retract so in this case we have an electronic mechanism that when activated will allow the sidebar to retract so what is that mechanism well we'll get into the actual detail we're going to take this apart but what you need is a key that has a an electric probe on it that talks to this lock the lock has a memory chip in it has a serial number electronic serial number in the plug itself and if you have the right key in there it can talk to this lock mechanically we've got it all set at the shear line with the right key and it will activate this mechanism and allow this plug or excuse me this sidebar to retract and then we can open the lock so what we have is a click is a lock that requires both a mechanical key with correct bidding and a part of that key has an electronic system that talks to this plug this particular one and tells it okay we have the right serial number in our memory this plug is allowed to be opened so there's an audit trail on all these features that come along with the click which is the main feature so I know this there's a bunch of electronic chips in here that has a memory chip so every time the key touches it it's recorded in here and that information also gets downloaded into the key so we have an audit trail who opened this lock with what key so it's John Smith opened this lock at 546 p.m. you know we have a clock calendar chip in the key so the key has a memory chip in it also and it stores all the data and it has been programmed to allow access so if it's not the right key, if it doesn't have the right physical bidding, it won't work. If it doesn't have the the uh, correct uh, electronic information in it, it won't work either. So it needs both of them. That's what a click is. Okay, we're kind of jumping ahead of ourselves. I've got two of these cylinders. Here's the one we looked at before and the plug unmodified. Here's the one that has a plug in it. That I've taken all apart and I've subassembled it here. I want you to notice something here. If I put a screwdriver in here, I can actually rotate the plug. You can hear, hear the sidebar clicking in. Um, all right, let's take this, this particular plug out. Uh, you, you're seeing way ahead of things, but the important part is this little this guy right here there's a spring that actually keeps this thing in the keyway so if I move this down to this position the sidebar will not go in I, can, I don't know if you can really see that but when it's in this position the sidebar can go in if the motor is in the right place <laughs> so it's critical if you manipulate this, you know, this is normally spring-loaded, so without a key, you're never going to get the sidebar in or something that holds this back. Then it's only up to the motor. So I think they added this mechanism later on because when this turns this way, it actually resets the, the little cam on the motor to make sure that it's locked. And it takes a lot more force now to push the sidebar in, where if it's in this position here, only thing preventing this come in is the rotation of the motor but we're getting way ahead of ourselves because uh, we haven't explored all this inside part in this mechanism but I'm going to do that next in terms of a PowerPoint and uh, upload it to YouTube so we can see all the little parts okay here we go we've got the what we've done is we've pried up this little plastic retainer and what do we see? We see a little, looks like an electric motor. There's a spring here. This spring is retained by this cover. And this is the spring that forces this thing into the keyway. There's another spring here. And that's, this is the sidebar. This spring, you know, biases the sidebar outward. And on the shaft of the motor, there's a little cam thing here. So this is kind of interesting okay this is the retainer that i pulled off this is the sidebar this is the sidebar spring this is the spring that returns the the locking uh, 
pin that goes from the bottom. Now this this part of the sidebar is what sits in the cam of the motor. This spring sits in this groove right here. This is the end of the sidebar that's closest to the face of the plug on the inside. So these are the actual parts that came out of the, the mechanism. Okay, we pulled out the little motor, at least we think it's an electric motor. You can see there's a shaft and a little cam on the end of it. This little spring retainer goes underneath the motor when it's in the pocket of the plug. There's wires going to this thing here. So, wow, this is kind of interesting. So what we've got here is this is this little pin that goes in the bottom that uh, returns the sidebar. There's a little groove in there. And we can continue on. Here's another shot of it. And here's this is what lays in the keyway. It has this little notch here and this little cutout here. So what do we got? We're just looking at the little electric motor. We think it's electric motor. Actually, this little collar here is where the that spring retainer goes. Here's another shot of the cam. So there's a flat here and there's a an angle cut there. Here we see another shot of it, so we're going to look at that. This is just a close-up of the little cam. I'm going to call it a cam. So this is another same shot of uh, this. This is the where the electronics are. The wires from the what we think is a motor come over to this thing. So we're going to pry this thing up. See, there's another little something here, a little metal bracket that goes to this. So now we've pried this thing out. Uh, I just wanted you to know this little tab bracket metal goes in here and it's staked in here with a, looks like a plug has been put in here. So what this actually is, is it makes a firm electrical contact to the ground. So the plug is connected to whatever this electronics are. Okay, now I've pried it up a little more. So you can see here's the wires coming from the uh, motor, some chips in here. I don't know, I'm not the electronics guru. Some other chips, and uh, this is the, the retaining tab just to help hold this thing in. There's some more circuitry. Now you see this little thing here that was projecting in the keyway. This is actually where the electrical contact is made from the key to uh, talk to this thing. So I've actually broken the whole thing off, busted this off, and here's the whole assembly. You got the electronics package and going over to the uh, what we suspect is a motor. This is just another shot of the motor and the electronics package is uh, separated from the plug. So now we're actually going to test and see if it is an electric motor. I've got a CR2032 battery, which is the same battery it would go in the key. Here I cut the wires. There's the electronics part. Here's the motor. And we're going to try to run it. We got the blue wire down and we're going to actually see if it spins like an electric motor. Okay. We're going to hit the battery and see if it spins. Now we are going to reverse the polarity and uh, see if it spins in the other direction. Okay, this is the uh, electronics package again. We're just going to go in and give us some uh, close details on these uh, various devices. We can see some kind of a driver chip here. Here's where the wires get soldered in. Here's the middle chips. I don't know. I think these are memory chips. I don't really know. And here's the, this uh, retaining ground. And here's the other electrical contact. So that's what's inside the electronics. This is just a shot of the plug. This hole, this milled out portion, is where the electronics, uh, that 
finger contact that goes through into the keyway. You can see here's where the retaining tab was, the firm ground that I broke off, and this is the routing of the wires. So that's the plug. There's some drill protection. Here I've just rotated the plug 90 degrees. You can see the six pin chambers. And this is where that stake would be for the firm ground to the plug and the wire routing. This is just the plug standing on end. Here's the slot where that pin would go, the, the reset pin and uh, the keyway. This is another shot of the empty plug. Here's the milled slot where the retaining pin goes from the bottom. Here's where the sidebar goes. This is where the spring would sit for the sidebar. The electric motor sits in this part. And up here is where a spring would go for the, that would keep this retaining pin biased in towards the keyway. So this is basically an empty plug. And, you know, we have this drill protection there. So I just thought you'd be interested in seeing that. Okay, this is what I got from Asa Abloy. Maybe I should have put this in first, but you can see this retainer. This is a plastic piece that holds all this stuff in. You know, the electronics package there. This is the, the reset pin that goes in from the bottom. Here's the sidebar. Here's the sidebar spring. Here's a spring that biases this into the keyway and has this notch that forces the sidebar back out. Something we didn't really talk about is the motor here has this groove in it, this cut shot, which I didn't really show very well in any of the shots, but the sidebar notch fits into this groove when the rotor shaft is rotated in the correct position. This retainer goes underneath and this little space between the spring clip sits in the collar of the motor and it helps hold the motor in the exact correct position um, in this direction so it doesn't move around and uh, so we've really looked at what it is the motor drives the electromechanical here's like a factory cutaway shot you know we have the key in here and here's the wires for the motor this is just a screw. This is the retaining bar that holds in the springs and the pins. You can see it's got barrels, spools, and there's the pins. And this is the plastic doodad for the motor. It looks like they sliced the motor in half and part of the mechanism. This is a newer version. It's more updated than what I was showing. So this is the latest version, which I don't have. And here's some cutaway of the key i guess this is kind of the battery it also has a proximity coil i think and it gets a green light when everything's go so these are three keys to actually uh, to program this thing is actually quite complicated you need to do the c key and the master key and this is a user key so this is a you can see this is the electrical contact that that comes down from the key and this little tab here is where it talks to that little finger on the on the electronics package that talks to the actual uh, electronics in the key plug so programming this is a kind of a complex procedure you need to have this key and you need to have this master key so you put in the master key in this programming device and you can Put in this key c key and then you can pro put this key in and program the key you know on the flip side of this key would have the uh, you know the same pr electronic probe so this is just another shot of an overall shot of the key you can see we have the six cut positions here for the uh, the key pins and here we go black power and data transfer strip right there so this is the click key that would actually operate the lock as long as you have the correct bidding and you have the correct programming in the key we'll talk to the lock and you can open it so what is the what do we what do we need this for 
why build a seal like you? Obviously, it's going to be a lot more expensive to put all this mechanism and stuff inside the plug. Well, what is the purpose? The purpose all has to do with key control. That's the number one security issue. Any lock system is key control. So if we've got a big facility with lots and lots of keys, we've got employees that leave, we've got keys that get lost or keys that get stolen. So we're talking about electronic access control. So what can we do? We can blacklist somebody's key so that they, they left, they didn't give us our key back. We can uh, just go into the computer and tell it that this, tell this plug that that key no longer works. Um, you know, that's the big problem. Instead of we don't have to rekey the whole facility mechanically and go back through all the whole system and change all the pins in the cylinders, we can just go to the computer and, and give instructions to a key to come in and touch this cylinder and tell it that that particular key doesn't work anymore. So, you know, we also have to renew a, the keys every once in a while. You have the particular owner of that key or that employee has to bring their key in every once in a while and put it in the programming station and any instructions that are in that key, any data that's received from any cylinders that it touched gets downloaded into the key. Now it gets downloaded into the system. So now we have all the data from that particular cylinder whose ever key touched it, when, what time, all et cetera, is in the, in the system. And we can see who's been in that lock, when and why. Well, not why, but what time, where, and uh, so we have all that data. So that's the big advantage of this whole system is we have the electronic override so we can uh, easily change key access. So on some observations, I think I've made a few mistakes. I can be wrong. You know, this is information that I've gathered I think is valid, but I could be wrong. Like I made a mistake that I said an ASA 600 plug could fit in the housing. No, I meant to say a twin 6000 or a V10 or a twin max or a twin max plus or even a twin max restricted that didn't use the sidebar could all fit in the same housing. That's all I'm trying to say there. So from an observation perspective, I found this really cool. This you know, I love to look inside locks and see what makes them tick. This is really cool, this interesting little electric motor. It's really tiny. It's only a 0 0.157 in diameter. That's four millimeters in diameter. It's quite small. And I think this stuff, uh, you know, is made in China. They have really made an expertise on making these little tiny motors. And now we see them in drones. So they really know how to make these motors very, very small. Um, I also implied that the, the motor spins all the time. Well, that's not really true. This little cam assembly only rotates a very small amount, like 20 degrees. So when it, you apply the current from the, the electronics to turn it, it only turns 20 degrees, roughly 20 degrees, and it turns to a position where the sidebar can go in and it only holds that power on for a short time, maybe like five seconds. That's programmable how long it holds it open. And then you turn the key. If you miss turning the key at that opportunity, then you have to reinsert the key. So the motor stalls, but it's only a small amount of current. I mean, this motor has a has a ohm reading of it's 24.8 ohms. So it's not going to draw a lot of power. It's not going to burn out. It can sustain that for a few seconds, and then you have the opportunity to open it. So I made a, this, the cam does not spin around all the time. It only moves back and forth like approximately 20 degrees. So when this pin goes to this position, then it resets this, and then the electronics, when you put the key in, then it allows this to be able to rotate, and then the electronics switch it. So I implied that the motor spins. I only did that because I wanted to see if it was actually electronic uh, electric motor, because there are some motors that are made that can only, you know, like a stepper motor, all kinds of other ways to make motors 
that only rotate so far and stop. So they're just using a standard stock motor from China that maybe they asked them to make one this small. So let's talk about defeat techniques. You know, standard picking, we can pick the, um, all the pins, you know, we've got counter milling in here, but we can pick it with standard picks, but the pick cannot access the sidebar from inside the keyway. It's, you can't get it in there. There's, it's solid metal. So that's impossible to access from, with a pick. So that's not going to work. So you can't access the sidebar. So there were other techniques. You know, if this pin here is uh, not parallel to the keyway, the key, there's no key in there, then it locks this sidebar and this mechanism in place. So if we're going to defeat, we have to like move this parallel to the keyway which you can do with a tool or a blank key or something like that. That's not a big deal, getting the pick in there. So we got that. Then there's some vibratory attacks that was talked about many years ago by a certain person that will remain unnamed because he's uh, not <laughs> well liked by many in the community. Uh, that's all you have to do if you've got this pin in the right position is you're trying to vibrate this little cam if you've shown here it's kind of in the lock position where the sidebar won't go in but if it rotates 20 degrees or so then the sidebar can slip in there so there were these vibratory attacks or banging it with a hammer or doing other things to try to get this little armature just to rotate enough so that the sidebar could drop in now these techniques may work i haven't really tried them of course uh, the more obvious are well yes Let's attack the electronics. Let's, uh, we can make an arrangement so we can figure out and look at the data communication between this electronics and the key itself and try to analyze the data streams. <laughs> so that's way beyond my skill expertise. Um, perhaps somebody has the ability to look at that, look on an oscilloscope and figure it all out. But, you know, it's, uh, it's heavily encrypted, I'm sure, and with the asses of assets of asa abloy i'm sure they've looked at that quite extensively to try to make that as robust and as uh, hack proof as possible but it is possible i'm sure with electronic hacking to figure all that out so if somebody wants to do that let me know about it because that's beyond my skill level well thanks for watching i'm i hope you stuck through this presentation all the way to the end even though it's almost half an hour long I guess I got carried away too much. That's kind of the way I do things, though. So give me any comments you think, and uh, I hope you learned something. Thanks for thanks again. Ciao.